Well, Nikki Haley has dropped out and the stage is set for Donald Trump to officially become the Republican Party's nominee. The question is, where does he stand on one very important issue that he's been conspicuously silent on? I mean, this is a man who blabs constantly about everything. So why hasn't he spoken about one of the most important issues, if not the most important issue this election? Gaza. Now, I think that a lot of people already deduced that Trump is going to be very pro-Israel, if not more so than Biden, because as president, he moved the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which was very divisive, to put it mildly, and he also gave Israel the Golan Heights. So when it comes to this genocide that we're seeing paid for by U.S. tax dollars, is he going to be pro-Israel still? I mean, he's also trying to pretend to be anti-war, even though he was very hawkish and militaristic as president. So where is he going to fall? Why has he been quiet? Well, he finally made some comments about this, and what he said is chilling. As you know, this sure. president of the United States, when it comes to Israel, is getting protested. Now he seems to be turning on Israel. But the, but the non-committed vote that Biden's getting, they're not going to like you either because you are firmly in Israel's camp, correct? Are you on yeah. board with the way the IDF is taking the fight to Ga in Gaza? You've got to finish the problem. You had a horrible invasion that took place. It would have never happened if I was president, by the way. As you know, Iran was broke, Brian. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas, for Hezbollah. They were broke. This would have never happened. And for another reason, they wouldn't have done it to me. I guarantee you that. They did this because they have no respect for Biden. You've got to finish the problem. I don't see how you can interpret this as anything but a full-throated endorsement of the total extermination of the people of Gaza. I mean, Israel is currently obliterating Gaza. How many homes have been lost? How much of Gaza will be habitable after this is done, if it's ever done at this point? Israel has wiped out universities, hospitals, cultural centers. They're being eradicated. So for him... The Republican Party's nominee to say you've got to finish the problem, that is very, very ominous. But it's not necessarily surprising. He could pretend to be anti-war all he wants, but we all know he was a hawk as president. And the only reason why there was a question as to whether or not he would be as vehemently supportive of Israel as he previously was is because, quote, in the immediate aftermath of the October 7th attack, Trump expressed his ire at Netanyahu, who congratulated Biden after his 2020 election win, saying the Israeli prime minister had let us down by allegedly backing out of what Trump said was supposed to be a joint U.S.-Israel operation to launch the airstrike that killed Iranian in general, Qasem Soleimani in 2020. Days later, Trump posted to his Truth Social platform that he stood with the Israeli prime minister after pushback from some GOP rivals. So the extent to which he'll criticize Netanyahu is if Netanyahu hurts his ego. But there are people within the Republican Party establishment that'll get him right back in line if he sways from the whole Israel good no matter what talking point. So this is horrifying because I think that we've gotten a lot of indications based on his policy and his rhetoric that he is going to be worse on this issue than Biden, if you can imagine that. And perhaps there's not a huge material difference in terms of their policy, because if they're both going to give Israel weapons to continue to indiscriminately slaughter the people of Gaza and the only difference is going to be just unequivocal support versus support that's more tepid in the sense that he's going to publicly condemn you, but behind the scenes still give you weapons and protect you at the UN on the Security Council, then maybe you can say there's not that big of a difference. But I think that if Trump were in power, things could be even worse. Perhaps Israel would feel no pressure. And they're not reacting to what little pressure the United States is applying on them as it is. But if there were no if there was no pressure, how much worse would they be? So it's really horrifying because we don't have an option in this election if Gaza is your number one issue, right? It's genocide or genocide. Which of the two genocide supporters do you want to win? Now, you can look to other issues where Biden is better. He's better on trans issues, on LGBTQ plus issues. Not as good as he should be, but nonetheless, he's better on that. He's better on abortion. But as for this one issue, you get genocide. It's just so horrifying.
And as bad as so many Democrats have been, Republicans have gone out of their way to be particularly cruel. Just recently, another Republican congressman was confronted, and look at the way that he handles people who are asking him why he's supporting a genocide. Why do you support the genocide and all of the war crimes and collective punishment? Are you concerned let about me all make the it, children? Let me make it clear. Gaza? Let me make it clear. Israel is our ally, will always be our ally. Even if they commit and war crimes? they are not guilty of genocide, so and why? I will support Israel forever. You will so su- Israel will stay your ally, you even though they commit you? Israel genocide. Will be my, uh, even, even though, even that's that. your term. Even Can when you they explain? Kill, that is your term. Even when they kill 30,000 kids. That is a statistic. That is a statistic. That's a statistic. Let me tell you a statistic. Uh-huh, yeah, please. Israel will oh, exist the jewish state will exist that's not a it statistic will exist, that's not over and that is for god absolutely to do nothing to do with what we're saying and i will you always support israel. Genocide, sir. i will always support israel, israel and you can tell the palestinians i will I never support them i am a palestinian them. myself then i will I'm tell you i will never face. support you yeah. i will tell you to your and face you want my you, you want you want my cousin to die Goodbye, I will Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. We will support yeah. Israel forever. You, no. So you are comfortable. So just FYI, Israel. this guy just said goodbye always to Palestine. Always support yes. Israel. You, okay. So you just said goodbye to Palestine. So you are goodbye. saying you are comfortable with the murder of thousands of children. The Jewish people will never you suffer are not again under, under Palestinian terrorism, under Hamas under Hezbollah. So Israel will be secure forever. Okay. God bless Israel so, forever. Thank so you for Jewish Jewish Palestine off the earth. Yeah. God yes. bless yep. Israel forever. I will never support them. This is what he's saying about a people that is being wiped off the map. And Republicans said that this is what they want. At the beginning of this genocide, we had members of Congress in the GOP saying, we're going to turn Gaza into a parking lot. So maybe the difference is just rhetorical when it comes to GOP versus Democrats. But still, this is really bad. So it's really chilling to see one of two major candidates say Israel should finish the problem, meaning wipe out Palestinians. But I can't say I'm surprised at all, and nobody should be surprised because Donald Trump has been unequivocally supportive of Israel despite some criticisms of Netanyahu here and there. And... um. Yeah, that's pretty alarming. But the reason why Trump has been quiet is because he knows that this is not an issue that is going to be a winning issue. If you look at public opinion polls, then the Republican Party is far more supportive of giving weapons to Israel than the Democratic Party's base. So he doesn't necessarily have to be quiet because Democrats aren't going to vote for him. But he knows that he could galvanize a lot of people to come out and vote against him if he gets a little bit too vocal about his desire to wipe Gaza off the map. So he is trying to read the room and be quiet, but we all know where he stands, and this isn't surprising to hear. So, um, yeah, Trump wants to finish the problem in Gaza. We're talking about human beings here, women, children, people with hopes and dreams. He wants to finish the problem. The question is, what's he going to do to assist Israel in finishing the problem? And the answer is going to be whatever his donors tell him to do, whatever the Republican Party establishment tells him to do. And since they're all genocidal, you can take a guess as to what Trump's policy is going to be there. Because once the election is over and he doesn't have to worry about public opinion polls and turning anyone off, all bets are off. He can get as crazy as he wants to in terms of funding and aiding and abetting this genocide. So uh, it's really dark times, but I can't say I'm surprised by this because this is exactly what we all expected from Donald Trump. Support for genocide unequivocally. (laughs) 